praises to Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya Warawat Kadash. That's all praises to the Father in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Shalom, family. This is Sabal Nabaya. Not going to be a very long lesson today. I'm just going to bring you some precepts and then we're going to talk about the facts. Elder Ayil says, The facts that breaks the unbelievers' backs. We have to go into this. We have to go into this because our people are so blinded when it comes to these type of things. I know y'all wonder, why does he keep harping on these holidays? Every time we have a holiday, here he comes, got to hear his mouth. Well, you're going to hear my mouth. We're going to cry out and spare not about this. I jumped on social media a few minutes ago, and the first thing I saw was a post that says, Happy Valentine's Day. Good morning. Jesus loves you. I said, oh, my stars and garters. You're going to tie a wicked day like Valentine's Day to the person who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. But we're going to exercise some patience and understanding because not that many years ago, I was celebrating Valentine's Day. Don't act like y'all ain't never went out and bought some chocolates for somebody Got some little heart-shaped candies, which, by the way, them little heart-shaped candies, y'all, actually have pork in them. Spit them out your mouth right now. All right. So for those of you who don't know, that may be, that, Zalakia, that may be living in a place where they don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Hey, consider yourself fortunate. Valentine's Day is the time where people take that time out in today's modern world to show their lover how much they love them and they do it on every level whether it's you know a girl that a little boy likes or two people who have been dating a while or they're engaged or they're married or they've been married for 40 years or they've been married for one year it doesn't matter that day is the day that the woman especially expects She expects for that special time for the man to come and do a little bit above, beyond, and extra for her. Most men, we don't care for it that much. It's a day where men have to spend a little bit more money on a day that they realize has no merit. But they do these things because most men want to please their wife, girlfriend, love interest whatever and you may be thinking to yourself there's nothing wrong with everybody setting apart a time to just love the ones who they love well that's not what the bible says so like always let's get our understanding via the precepts let's go to isaiah chapter 28 read verses 9 and 10 Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So we get our understanding, here a little and there a little, line upon line, because that is how we learn doctrine. That is how we get understanding via the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Psalm 119 and we're going to start with verse 104 that's psalm 119 verse 104 through these precepts salakia through thy precepts i get understanding therefore i hate every false way drop down to verse 128 therefore i esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and i hate every false way so we understand that when we get our understanding this way we're getting it the right way we're going the right direction we're walking the narrow path we're not being led astray through deception through guile through cunning now go with me in the pearl of great price to moses chapter 6 and we're going to read verse 63 that's moses chapter 6 verse 63 in the pearl of great price and behold all things have their likeness And all things are created and made to bear record of me, both things which are temporal and things which are spiritual. 
things which are in the heavens above and things which are on the earth and things which are in the earth and things which are under the earth both above and beneath all things bear record of me so the most high says that all things bear record of him both things which are temporal and things which are spiritual so most people know what the word spiritual means but do you know what the word temporal means let's go and look in the dictionary and get a definition of the word temporal temporal adjective of or relating to time pertaining to or concerned with the present life of this world worldly wow you know it's it's funny when a dictionary starts speaking like scripture pertaining to or concerned with the present life of this world worldly enduring for a time only temporary transitory trans transitory maybe it is transitory 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 I don't know but temporary so we understand that this word temporal it is pertaining to a time it is something that is temporary you know if something is temporal you know you know it's only going to be that way for a time comprende all right so the most high says both things which are spiritual and things which are temporal so these things bear record of him and we all know that when we leave this world that we have to give an account for our actions don't think that anything is going to go unnoticed that any stone is going to be unturned because the most high has eyes on you he's watching everything that you're doing you need to make sure that you're doing everything you can for the kingdom and don't be following after your own selfish desires because that's what you're doing on this day that's what you're doing on Valentine's Day if you're celebrating Valentine's Day now let's go on our second stick to Alma 42. That's Alma 42 and we're going to read verse 7. Alma 42 and 7. And now ye see by this that our first parents were cut off both temporally and spiritually from the presence of the Most High. And thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will. So our first parents that's always referencing Adam and Eve so follow me Adam and Eve were actually communing the way they were intended to in the beginning with the Most High but when they fell through sin then they entered into a temporal state they were cut off temporal they were they were temporally cut off spiritually cut off at that point in time and we understand that it is temporal because when Yeshia returns, there's going to be a change. Understand that in the future, there will be a time where we're not going to have to deal with all of this wickedness. You know, we're going to go back into the way that we used to be. But right now, we're in that temporal state. And it says right here in Alma 42 that thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will. So in this state, you know, our, our, our sin nature actually wants to follow after our own will. We want to be a part of the world. We want to do the things that they are doing. Now let's go to Helaman chapter 14. That's Helaman chapter 14 and we're going to read verse 16. Helaman 14 and 16. Yea, behold, this death bringeth to pass the resurrection, and redeemeth all mankind from the first death, that spiritual death, for all mankind by the fall of Adam, being cut off from the presence of the Most High, are considered as dead, both as to things temporal and to things spiritual. So that's saying exactly what we just discussed, that after the fall of Adam, we were cut off. Let's go ahead and read verse 17. Helaman 14, 17. But behold, the resurrection of Christ redeemeth mankind, yea, even all mankind, and bringeth them back into the presence of the Most High. So, again, 
what we're seeing is that the state we're in right now, this is a temporal state. So how are we supposed to behave in this temporal state? Are we supposed to give in to all of our base desires? Are we supposed to just do what we want? Are we supposed to do as we will? Hey, we know better than that. Now let's go into our first stick. Let's go into 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 14. That 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So my people out there that think it's perfectly okay for you to take part in Valentine's Day. And especially if you're calling yourselves Christians. That means you follow Christ. If you are following Christ and the world is taking place in this day, then what business have you also taking place, taking part in this day? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's go to, let's see, Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 6 through 11. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Ahia upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Most High. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Most High. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You see that? The scripture says, reprove them. It's telling you, cry aloud and spare not. Isaiah 58 verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So we are commanded to let these people know that what they are doing is dead wrong. They are in sin, albeit ignorantly. That's why we're to have some level of compassion. We're supposed to be patient with them. Have some understanding. Understand that, hey, just because you saying it, Give these people a chance to listen to you, to hear you, plant the seed, but let them do their own research. Let them call you back and say, hey, brother, I looked into what you were saying and you were absolutely right. You know, give that a chance to happen because at the end of the day, you aren't waking up anybody. It is the Holy Spirit that makes alive. It is the Holy Spirit that is the breath that blows on those dry bones, that gets those organs back pumping. It is the Holy Spirit which brings them to life because right now they are the walking dead. And you just read in Ephesians where it said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now you may be saying, well, Valentine's Day, how is that a work of darkness? Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what Valentine's Day is. So, Valentine's Day is celebrated on the 14th of February. So, let's go, let's see. Let's go to page 42 in the Pagan Book of Days. February 14th. I'm going to show you what was going on on February 14th. February 14th, St. Valentine's Day is a festival of love that amal amalgamates the pagan traditions of Rome and Northern Europe. It is also dedicated to the Norse deity Bali, the archer god, son of Odin, and to Juno, Februa, goddess of maternal and married love. The festival begins after sunset on 13th February. Girls should decorate their pillows with five bay leaves to dream of their lover and husband-to-be. In England, on this day, 
an arch of brambles is carried to banish unwelcome spirits. In Scandinavia, there is a tradition of running labyrinths on this day. And then when you read down a little bit more, it goes into February 15th. It says, Lupercalia is an ancient festival of Roman paganism. So what you find when you start doing research on Valentine's Day is that modern Valentine's Day is a combination of the Valentine's Day of February 14th back in the day, what they would do, and also of Lupercalia. They used to, they used to worship Lupercus during this festival. Now the way that they used to actually do things in this particular festival is just horrible. Check this out. They used to have a lottery. The young men would have a lottery and they would draw a woman's name and then they would make that woman be a sexual partner of theirs for a whole year and they did this whether the woman wanted to or not. So if she wasn't giving it up, she was getting raped. They would sacrifice small animals and then they would actually beat the women with whips and things like that. So if you want to know where all of that uh, bondage and sadomasochism and all that stuff has its roots, it's in festivals like this. This is stuff these sick people were doing way back when. History.com says Lupercalia was a bloody, violent, and sexually charged celebration awash with animal sacrifice, random matchmaking, and coupling in hopes of warding off evil spirits and infertility. So understand, when you set aside this day to send flowers, to buy candy, little cute, innocent looking, heart shaped candy that got pork in it. <laughs> Anyway, when you do these things, when you, when you make this day about expressing your love, understand that you are taking part in a ritual, in a ritual that people have been doing for ages, that are still taking part in traditions all around the world that are tied to this ritualistic sacrifice and wickedness. This is darkness. The scripture says you're not to have any dealings with it. You're not to partake. You're not to fellowship with this darkness. Understand, even though you may do be doing something that is light, you may be, you know, hey, all I did was I got her a card. It can't be no harm in getting her a card. Understand that just by you getting the card and giving it to her on this day, because you're doing it because it is Valentine's Day. Don't lie, you didn't do it yesterday, you ain't doing it tomorrow, you're doing it today. Then you are, even in the smallest faction, taking part in the wickedness of this day. And the Most High, He don't like that. All praises to Ahaya, Bahashem Yashaya, Wawawak Kadash.